Good morning, dear friends. Welcome to a new day, a day in which we are invited to progress, to movement, to work, to be productive in thoughts of love, of creativity, kindness, all the virtues that we are to acquire. And that's what we're talk going to talk about according to Jesus' teachings, reported in the book Jesus in the Home, by Neo Lúcio, through Chico Xavier, chapter 37, The Idol Son. There was a gathering amongst Jesus in Peter's home, and every occasion was an occasion to learn and to pray, and of course to serve. They were discussing, some of the disciples were discussing about their faith, the works of faith. It was when Jesus, listening to them, started telling a story. The story of a Lord who had lots of lands and many subjects living there. Some were active, faithful to the Lord, others went far away enjoying the abundance of the lands, but also killing the birds, destroying the plants, and so on and so forth. But there was one amongst them, and though they were troublemakers, this one who lived in the Lord and talked about the greatness of the Lord and the greatness of the resources, the abundance of his care, the providence. And yet, as Jesus says, he would explain it conscientiously, but avoided every decree. He intended to live in his own way, without any rules, not even those of the one that he had given in the valley in which he was living with luxury and apparently happy, but he got old and sick. He ran back to the Lord, but the guards didn't let him in because his name was on not in the least of active servants. And he proclaimed that he believed in the Lord. He talked about him. And they said to him, the guard retorted without blinking an eye and said to this, Men. What good was such a conviction in the Lord if you avoided the rules of the Lord, wasting invaluable time upsetting his works? Your past is alive in your current situation. What good did you do to trust in the Lord if you never came to him, offering one minute of collaboration on behalf of everyone else? So you should see that your belief was merely a way of appeasing your conscience for the bullies of your heart. And of course, this man was forced to begin his task from scratch for his own spiritual renewal. And Jesus at the end, after a few minutes in silence, he asked this question by saying, this is a picture of every idle child of God. Will any healthy and intelligent person who believe in the existence of the eternal father who recognize his power, justice, and goodness through the physical expressions of nature, but who do not come to him in simple prayer from time to time, or honor his laws with the same smallest gesture of aid for their fellow beings, or who do not show the smallest trace of interest in the designs of the great sovereign, be able to reap any reward from the dead, from their dead, pointless convictions. We are being invited today to think about our convictions because often we say, I believe in God and I believe in Jesus and I believe in love. But when somebody hurts us, we refuse to forgive. 
when somebody does not treat us with all the pampering, we hold grudges. And how often we use the resources we have from our health to our wealth, to our intelligence and capacity of love only for those whom we think are deserving of it and who will reward us later. There will be a point from now to the moment we discarnate in which, like this man, we will feel like we want the close care of the Lord and we won't find it. We'll have to begin at some point. Let us then begin today by recalibrating ourselves, turning it all around, cleansing the heart, cleansing our minds, forgiving ourselves and everyone, and beginning anew, thinking of the good we need to do towards others. Shall we, friends? Mm -hmm. Dear Mother, Father God, what a beautiful message. Yes, we've been idle for many lives, using and abusing the resources you've given us from our health to people in our lives and resources, animals and plants. We're indebted, indebted consciences, for sure. There's no doubt. But we're not going to stop because you're giving us the invitation to move. To move forward, to move around and co-create with you. We forgive ourselves and we forgive everyone from the past and the present. And we want to be useful to everyone you present to us, knowing that we are all your creatures, the creatures of your love, of your wisdom. We pray today for those who are sick in the hospitals or in their homes. We pray for those or mentally you especially, and need a helping hand. We pray for those who are in prison. May they prepare themselves for a new beginning sooner or later. We pray for those who are in the streets, homeless, or in shelters. Victims of domestic abuse. We pray for the children who depend on parents, caregivers, and educators. May we, the adults, be patient and loving and caring. Provide them with everything that they need. We have so much to pray for, joining forces with you, but we are certain that you are providing to all. Use us, dear Lord to fulfill your designs because we are your servants. Beloved children of yours, but your servants. And we are honored to be so. Thank you for creating this beautiful and wondrous universe. May we allow the protecting spirit you have assigned to us. May we allow them to guide us, protect, and inspire us today and always. And so be it.
Thank you, friends. Let us be in harmony with God and co-create with Him. We hope you continue watching the programs at Kardec Radio throughout the day. And hopefully tomorrow we'll be back for another morning prayer. Because here at Kardec Radio, we're always nourishing our souls.